Welcome to the television outreach of Rapper Revival Ministries. Experience the cutting edge end time ministry of Dr. Michael McDowell as he unveils God's prophetic program, line upon line, precept upon precept. The signs of the times are happening with great intensity and increased frequency. Like a woman in travail, and the pregnant heavens are about to release Jesus. This is the terminal generation. And this is Midnight Prime. Readying the redeemed, warning the world. Welcome to another episode of Midnight Cry. I am Crystal Bramble. Tonight, Dr. McDowell will be going through Revelation chapter 12. He is going to explain the three main characters, the woman, the red dragon, and the man-child. Sit back, relax, and enjoy as Dr. Michael McDowell reveals the book of Revelation chapter 12. Praise the Lord, everybody. We want to welcome you one more time to Midnight Cry, where we are readying the redeemed and warning the world. It is our conviction and our stated belief that we are living in the last days, the closing days of time. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, that uh, the generation, the generation that sees Israel become a nation again, and that happened in 1948, will be the last generation of men to live on this planet before the rapture and the return. That means... Amen, that we are now living in the terminal generation and the end is very near. Uh, this program has been raised up by the Lord himself. Amen, started just about a year ago on the 11th of September, 2019. We felt as if we were directed by the Lord to, to, to enter a television ministry at this time. And uh, by January, 2020, so much was beginning to happen in the world that we are assured that this is God's timing. And even as I speak, and it is now sept late September. This has been recorded in late September 2020. We can see uh, stupendous and all sorts of uh, strange things happening on planet Earth. Just as the Bible prophesied, just as the Word of God said, everything is coming together. There's a convergence uh, taking place. And we just had a, a Zoom webinar called The Convergence. So we're going to have another one coming very soon called The Shift. And we are, we are entering into a time where there's going to be a shift. And God is shift, beginning to shift the consciousness of those who will listen uh, to take our minds away from this earth and uh, lift our eyes so we can touch the glories of heaven. Give us an idea of what we're going to experience in the spirit realm. Because soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. And with this assurance, we want to continue our journey into the book of Revelation. And we are about to get into Revelation, the 12th chapter. Well, I just want to read from my, my text, Revelation and Reality. And for those of you who would like to pro procure a copy, this is available at our website, michaelmcdowellministries.com, michaelmcdowellministries.com. You can get the, the book as an e-book, which will be downloaded to you directly, or you can get it from the website as an Amazon paperback, which will be shipped to you, of course. And uh, this is a textbook on eschatology, and it... it, it tends to take you from the simple things to the complex things. And I, th I believe it can be enjoyed at every level, the, the level of the novice, the level of the, 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 the trained student, and even the level of the expert. You're going to get something, glean something from this as God unfolds to you the end times. And here's what I say in, in looking at my outline of the book of, of Revelation. Uh, three parts. Part one, the things which thou hast seen. Part two, the things which are. And part three, the things which shall be hereafter. Part three, the things which shall be hereafter, has five cycles. And we are about to, we have just completed cycle two. And uh, cycle two of, of this third part of the book of Revelation uh, has uh, five sections. And I'll read them for you. The tribulation, servants and saints. The terrible trumpets. Thunders and time out. Two tormenting testifiers. And finally, the temple and the testament. The tribulation, servants and saints are chapter 7. The terrible trumpets are chapters 8 and 9. Thunders and time out, of course, are chapter 10. Two tormenting testifiers in the temple of the testament are chapter 11. We have just concluded chapter 11, which we saw brings us to the end of one cycle. And, uh, and the third cycle begins in Revelation chapter 12 and goes all the way to Revelation chapter 14, where there's another ending. So today, we're going to be looking at Revelation, the 12th chapter. This is an, uh, a wonderful chapter. 
I'm looking for adjectives. This is an exhilarating chapter, uh, a very interesting chapter, a chapter where we are going to begin to apply our interpretive skills. Uh, we're going to be, begin to look at picture, and we're going, to, we're going to look at the symbology, and we're going to apply the unraveling of the symbology by using the analogy of faith. We're going to find places in Scripture where these things are stated so we can bring to, to fullness or, or we can flesh out or we can gel exactly what the symbol uh, is talking about. So, Revelation chapter 12 begins like this. Let me tell you what it's called in my, in my outline. Revelation chapter 12 is called the woman, the word, and the warfare. The woman, the word, and the warfare. And it starts by speaking about a woman that John is seeing. John the Revelator is seeing this woman uh, in the heavenlies. Here's how it starts. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. What a rich vision. Can you imagine uh, the dark blue or navy blue or dark or black background with stars speckled or, or you know, uh, out of space? And then after that, we, have, we see a, a great wonder appearing. A woman, the garment she wears is the sun. In other words, it's bright, it's shining. It's almost, uh, you almost can't look at it. And she is standing on the moon. Wow. Amen. And then she has on her head a crown of 12 stars. That is rich symbology. And as it goes on, it says that she was, she, she was pregnant. Verse 2. And she, being great with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven horns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Stop. Wow. That, that's action. That's what I call action in heaven. You know, it's, it's, it's extremely visual. You know, there's a movie company. I think it's called Universal. And their logo, when, when a, a Universal movie is beginning, you see, you see the heavenlies, you see the stars, then you see the earth. And then you see the words Universal coming around the earth. And a beautiful picture. Well, this is action and colorful action in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, standing on the moon. Amen. A crown of stars upon her head. And uh, she's pregnant. She's about to uh, deliver a child. And then a great red dragon appears. And that great red dragon is standing there. He wants to devour her child as soon as it is born. Wow, what's this? And this child is a male child. It's caught up to God on his throne. And this child also rules all nations with a rod of iron. What's happening here? What's this interplay? And then it tells us a number of things about the dragon. Well, the first thing I, we need to find out is who is this woman? This woman who brings forth this man-child. Of course, uh, I know there was... Uh, during Trinidad Carnival many, many years ago, when the famous producer, the famous band producer, uh, Peter Minchel, um, had a depiction, a carnival depiction, where he used the man-child and a number of other uh, Christian symbols. Well, this male child, this man-child of Revelation chapter 12, is of course Jesus Christ. He's caught up to God on his throne. He rules all nations with a rod of iron. Amen. So it's Jesus. Uh, we still try to find out, but who is the woman? Is the woman Mary? Is the woman the church? Is the woman Israel? And the only way we can get the answer to that is to find out from Scripture itself. The Bible says that the woman is clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and she's wearing a crown of 12 stars. Where else in Scripture can we find uh, these exact symbols? A sun, a moon, and stars. The only place where these symbols coincide is in the book of Genesis. You know, sometimes we believe to study eschatology we need to study Daniel and Zechariah and, and Revelation and these apocalyptic books. But right in the book of Genesis, uh, uh, the, beginning, the, the, the end is enclosed in the beginning. And in the book of Genesis chapter 37, the Bible speaks of a young man called Joseph. And Joseph has a dream. And in the dream, he dreams that, 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 that his sun and the moon and 11 stars are bowing down, doing obeisance to his star. And he, he, after the dream, now he was an indiscreet dreamer. He would tell all of his dreams to everybody. He went and he told his family the dream. And it is significant that Jacob says, uh, remember the dream is the sun and the moon and 11 stars bowing down to a 12 star, which is him. 
And uh, Jacob gets angry. Jacob says, son, how could you dream such a thing? Do you believe that I and your mother and your 11 brethren will bow down to you and do obeisance to you? You are the least of us. So there we have it. The this, this sun represents Jacob, uh, Joseph's father. The moon represents his mother. And the 11 stars represents his brethren. So it means that the, the woman is not the church. The woman is not Mary. The woman is the whole house of Israel. So the woman depicts Israel. And we, we get that by using the analogy of faith and unraveling the symbology. And this woman is, of course, she's pregnant, travailing, verse 2, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Now, everybody knows the symbology of the red dragon. This red dragon is not Bruce Lee. Amen. It's not a, some other uh, figment of our imagination. This is Satan himself. He's called the dragon, the great red dragon. And in other places, he's specifically identified as the red dragon, the old serpent, Satan. Amen. So we know who the red dragon is. And, uh, but this red dragon appears in the form of having seven heads, ten horns upon those heads, and seven crowns upon his heads. And uh, anyone who has been studying scripture for any time understands that this is a depiction, this is, this, is a, this is the visage or the appearance of the Roman Empire. Amen. So, so, so Satan, the great red dragon, is coming at this woman who is about to have a child, adorned or dressed up or disguised as the Roman Empire. And you, you remember, of course, when the man-child was born, when Jesus was, Jesus was born, uh, that Herod sent uh, armies, amen, to kill children two years old and under in the area of Ramah to make sure he destroyed Jesus Christ. So this was, this was Satan operating through a branch of the Roman Empire to try to destroy the Christ child. Of course, he did not succeed. It then goes on to give us a little more about the dragon himself in verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as she was born. It tells us here that his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast them to the earth. Satan himself led a rebellion in heaven. He enticed or he seduced a number of God's angels, one third of the uh, entire company of angels. He seduced them, amen, and brought, and, 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 and they rebelled against the Lord and they were cast down to the earth. And so that's why it says his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and it cast them to the earth. So Satan was cast out with, with the one third of the angels that he drew. And uh, this here in Revelation 12, 4 is the first casting out of Satan. And we're going to find out a little in a, a few verses later on that in this same chapter, we will also see the second casting out of Satan. Satan was cast out twice. Once from the heavenlies where he served as Lucifer, the anointed cherub, amen, who covered the throne in worship. And he was dismissed from the presence of God with one third of the angels that he drew. And there's a second casting down that's coming a little later. Let's go to verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. That's Jesus. And the child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God. Now, this casting down of Satan here that is mentioned in Revelation chapter 12 is, in the, is at the midpoint of the tribulation prior to World War III. The reason why World War III happens is because of this casting down. I mean, when he is cast down, he releases the four demons that are bound in the river Euphrates and they come forth to cause World War III. And the Bible speaks of this casting down in another place and says, he has come down unto you. The devil has come down unto you having great wrath for he knoweth that he has but a short time. When it says, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's one thousand two hundred and sixty days. That again speaks of the second half of the tribulation. Forty-two months, three and a half years. So, so and the woman here is Israel. Uh, a remnant of Israel, those who serve, who will serve the Lord Jesus Christ, will be persecuted by the devil in the end times, and they will flee from him during the, during the great tribulation. That's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24. And it speaks about, uh, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not from the beginning of the world, even unto this time. And it says, if you're on the house up, you know, run. If you're, if you're pregnant, if you're with child, if you're, if you're nursing a child, run. Amen. It talks about if it's on the Sabbath day, run. And he's speaking to Israel and to, and, and to the, the people who, who serve God in the end times, in the tribulation. 
And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God. God shelters her and they, that they should feed her there for the entirety of the second half of the tribulation or the great tribulation. And so the woman is Israel. And God is, God is introducing us to a number of actors. The woman who is Israel, the dragon who is Satan, uh, the man-child who is Christ. Amen. And the fact that Israel will be preserved, she'll be persecuted, but she'll be, be preserved in the second half of the tribulation. And then the chapter changes tone. But uh, we have been prepared for the change of tone by what has gone before. Verse 7 says, I love this, and there was war in heaven. Uh, colon, and there was war in heaven. And then it begins to give you the specifics of this war. So I, I want it, saints, I want you to know that spiritual warfare is real. There is war that is enacted in heaven. And we who, are in, we who live on this planet, we who are the church or anyone who is serving the Lord in, in that period of time, we have the privilege of prayer where we can call upon the Lord and the Lord will dispatch angelic forces to war on our behalf. The Bible says, are they not all ministering spirits to minister to those of us who are heirs of salvation? So they, they war on our behalf. Of course, you know the famous passages with Daniel, when Daniel prayed and Michael was sent, uh, sorry, Gabriel was sent with a message and there was warfare over Persia. The prince of Persia withstood Gabriel and then Gabriel called for reinforcement and God sent Michael and a number of, and an entourage or squad of, of warrior angels and they engaged the prince of Persia in warfare as, as Gabriel slipped the message through to Daniel. There is war that goes on in the heavenlies. Glory to God. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Michael, the archangel, hallelujah, the prince of Israel, amen. Uh, one of the archangels that are named in scripture, very few are named. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels. So there is a war, a cosmic war going on between Michael, the archangel, and an entourage of warrior angels that are serving God. And they are fighting against Lucifer himself, Satan himself, and an entourage of his forces. So there is a, there's a battle going on between angels and demons. Somebody wrote a book, I believe, called Angels and Demons, and it was made into a movie. So this warfare is real. Let me read that verse again. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against a dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. The dragon prevailed not. The dragon lost the war. Come on, somebody. The dragon lost the war. Glory to God. Amen. We are on the winning side. The word of God says, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And prevail not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. The dragon was defeated and his place was found no more in the heavenlies. And the great red dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Here it is. Identifying who he is. And the great red dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Remember, I spoke to you about from verse 4 and said concerning the dragon that his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman. And I said that this casting out here was speaking of his first casting out when he caused rebellion in the heavenlies and one third of the angels were cast out with him. And this, this passage here in verse 9 speaks of his second casting out. During the middle of the tribulation, there's a war between Michael and, and the dragon and the angels. And the dragon does not prevail. He loses and he's cast out of the earth. This is when the Bible says, And the devil is now come down unto you having great wrath because he knows he only has a short time. That short time is three and a half years, 42 months, or 1,260 days. And verse 10 continues. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Hallelujah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Now, the Bible then begins to speak of the generic casting down of Satan. How Satan is engaged in a constant warfare against the people of God. And the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He has been cast down. Amen. And when he was initially cast down, it means that he, he can no longer go into the heavenlies. Yeah, so let me quickly distinguish between the two casting downs. When Satan is first cast down, initially, uh, uh, during the, 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 the early eons of mankind, 
when, when he rebelled against God and he was cast out with one third of the angels who rebelled with him. And his activity was on earth, in the heavens above the earth, and in the heavenlies of, of outer space. And he had access, Satan still had access to the third heaven. And one of the activities he, 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 he continually perpetrated in the third heavens was that he went before God to accuse the brethren. Uh, do you see your servant Job? Look at your servant Job. He is only serving you because you bless him. You take away those blessings and see if he will uh, if he will not turn his back on you. Remember that? Uh, Satan goes before the Lord, amen, uh, into the heavenlies, and he accuses the brethren. And so, so right now, that is still his role. He still goes before God to accuse the brethren, amen. But thank God for Jesus, amen, because the Bible says Jesus sits on the right hand of God where he ever lived to make intercession for us. He stands in the gap for us. But in the middle of the tribulation, Satan will be further cast down, amen, to, the, to planet Earth. And his activities will be confined to the earthly sphere, amen. His wings will be clipped. He will no longer be able to access the, the heavenlies to accuse the brethren, amen. He will no longer be able to access anywhere else but the atmosphere around the Earth and planet Earth. That's why it says, I say it again, he has come down unto you having great wrath and he, because he knows that he has but a short time. Let me add this. God has dropped this in my spirit. The devil is a deceiver. And one of the strongest things, the strongest characteristics of this end time is spiritual deception. The Bible says the deception will be so strong that even the very elect may be deceived. You want to understand me? So, so be discerning. Know the word of God. Understand what is going on around you. Amen. Because the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. And how do we overcome the devil? Amen. And they overcame him, verse 11, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. They overcame by the fact that they were saved by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, by declaring God's word at the devil, we win spiritual warfare. Amen. And by the full, complete, amen, unequivocal surrender of our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So what the Holy Spirit tells you to do, you do. If you're on a battlefield, amen, and the enemy is attacking, and, and, and you know you're a warrior of God, amen, and the Spirit of God whispers into your ear, take two steps to the right. As soon as you take two steps to the right, sh -sh -sh -sh, some fiery darts fly and they pass exactly where you had been. And God says, uh, 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 duck and come up swinging with your sword. You know that God is directing you in the battle. You need to be able to hear God's voice if you are able to, if you are to triumph in the spiritual warfare. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens, verse 12, and ye that dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. I want to say this. That, that phrase there, inhabitants of the earth, really speaks of a special class of people who have rejected God. Amen. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. As I said, a short time is 1,260 days. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman, that's the woman who, Israel, but to flee from him, and, and which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. Time, times, and half a time. Amen, three and a half years. So this is, this is Israel being protected by God in the three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. Let me read that verse again. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Amen. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, hallelujah, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which a dragon cast out of his mouth. Of course, this is figurative. It not, a, not, a, not an actual flood of waters, but the forces of darkness are, are, are released after the woman. Armies are probably released after the woman, and but, but God protects her. God, the earth opens its mouth and swallows, her up, swallow, swallows up the flood. And the, verse 17 says, And the dragon was wroth, with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. A dramatic ending. 
And the dragon was wroth. The dragon was enraged. He was angry with the woman, Israel, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. He launched warfare against Israel, and which, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, join MTM. Amen. We, we thank God for Reverend Basil Hansen and his wife, Diane Hansen, doing a tremendous job at the MTM Television Network. So we thank you again for joining us tonight on Midnight Cry, where we are reading the redeemed and we are warning the world. And I want to encourage you, if you need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, amen, he is just a prayer away. Just bow your hearts and, and confess your sins and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. The Bible says to be absent. To, uh, once you do that, he comes to live within you. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And to be absent from the body, if that happens right now, which we're not looking for, uh, you'll, be, you'll be present with the Lord. Amen. This transaction is real. I experienced it uh, I can't remember, almost 40 years ago. And uh, I've never turned my back on the Lord. Uh, and thank God for His grace. His grace gives me the strength to live the life that, that the, the Bible says I ought to live. And the Bible, the scriptures are authoritative. They, uh, they tell us uh, what we should believe and how we should behave. Amen. And we need to adjust our lives. The Bible is the manufacturer's manual. If you live according and in accordance with it, you will have long life and prosperity. Amen. God bless you. Love you with the love of the Lord. I'm Dr. Michael McDowell signing off. Feel free to give me a shout by email, by phone. Amen. I'm always willing to connect with you and to share with you from the word of Almighty God. Until next time, God bless. The woman, the war, and the word. A very insightful topic. Rich symbolism in unraveling the mystery of the woman standing on the moon, clothed with the sun, a crown of 12 stars on her head. The sun represents Jacob, the moon represents Rachel, and the 12 stars represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Genesis chapter 37, I think it is. And all this symbolizes the nation of Israel, without a doubt. We look forward to the continuation of this study next week. There is always a lot more in store for you. Do continue to view. Bye for now. Love you with the love of Jesus.